Hey guys, today we're going to redesign one of my favorite desserts. It's a dessert I've served on many menus, but I'm sure that with the recipes and techniques I know nowadays, I can bring it to the next level. We're going to make a Bailey's Cremeux filled with a caramelized chocolate cream, a pistachio crumble, a verbena broth, an apple and ginger gel, a Bailey's ice cream, and a chocolate suya. So, let's begin. First, the caramelized white chocolate cream. Spread 150 grams of white chocolate on a tray and toast it at 150 degrees Celsius for around 12 minutes till golden brown. Once toasted, let it cool down for 5 minutes and then transfer it into a blender. Also add 70 grams of milk and then blend it till smooth. This takes around 4 to 5 minutes. Then pour it into a piping bottle and fill your desired mold. The molds in this video are from Mold Butters. Find a link in the description. Then let it set in your freezer. Here I use it as an interior, but once defrosted, the texture is amazing. Now for the Bailey's Cremeux. For that first soak 2 leaves or 3.3 grams of gelatin in cold water. Then pour 200 grams of Bailey's into the saucepan and also add 100 grams of cream, 40 grams of egg yolk and 10 grams of cornstarch. Now cut half a vanilla pot in half and scrape out the seeds. Add them to the saucepan and then while stirring bring the Cremeux to a boil on a medium heat. Once it has thickened, turn off your heat and dissolve the gelatin. Then also add 100 grams of white chocolate and mix it well till smooth. After that, pour it into a piping bottle and fill the bottom of your bigger mold. Then gently add your interior on top. Now close the mold with the top half and press it well. Once that's done, fill it completely with the cremeux and make sure you press the nozzle well on the corners. Then let it set in your freezer for at least 6 hours. Now for the chocolate brush. Transfer 150 grams of cocoa butter into a saucepan and melt it on a low heat. Meanwhile, mix 150 grams of white chocolate with a touch of green fat soluble coloring powder and once the cocoa butter is melted, pour it on the white chocolate. Then emulsify it with a hand blender. You can also use a whisk, but the hand blender is faster and you'll be sure that there are no more lumps in the chocolate. Then fill your brush machine. After that, remove the cremeuse from the mold and transfer them on a frozen tray. Now brush a thin layer of the green brush all around. Then keep them in your freezer for later. Now for the Bailey's ice cream. First weigh your empty pan. Mine weighs 930 grams. Then pour 400 grams of Bailey's into the pan and reduce it till it weighs 180 grams. Mix it every now and then to prevent it from burning, especially once it starts to thicken. Then weigh your pan to see how much it has reduced. For me the end weight needs to be 930 grams plus 180 grams equals 1110 grams. After that add 220 grams of milk, 330 grams of cream and 125 grams of sugar. Now while stirring bring this to a boil. Then pour 100 grams of egg yolk into a bowl and while stirring pour the boiling liquid on the yolks. Pour it back into the pan and while stirring heat this up till it's 85 degrees celsius. Then turn off your heat, add 3 grams of ice cream stabilizer and mix it once more. Now pour it into a bowl, cover it with foil and let it rest in your fridge for at least 8 hours. I always leave it overnight. The next day you just need to mix it for 30 seconds and then pour it into an ice cream machine. Then turn on your machine and turn it into a beautiful ice cream. Now let it set in your freezer for 30 minutes and then it's ready to be used. A great way to serve many guests with not much stuff is to pre-shape your ice cream. For this, fill a piping bag with the ice cream and then fill your desired mold. Then let it set in your freezer. Now for the Verbena broth. Transfer 25 grams of Verbena into a blender and also add 260 grams of apple juice, 25 grams of maple syrup and 20 grams of apple vinegar. Blend this to completely smooth. After that, pour it on a sieve that's lined with a kitchen paper to clarify it. Let it drain in your fridge to prevent it from changing color. Now once that's done, we're going to bind the liquid with a touch of Santan gum. This is just to bind the liquid. And if you gently mix it, it will incorporate and thicken the liquid without adding too much air. If there is any air in it, you can always vacuum it to uh, remove the air because then you end up with a beautiful, rich and thickened broth that's still clear and with the beautiful green as well. And we do this because otherwise, if you taste the sauce, it will be gone within seconds. And if you thicken it a bit, it will stay on your tongue and th that will intensify the flavor and make it so much better. Once thickened, keep it in your fridge for later or freeze it in ice cube trays for when you need small quantities of time. 
Now for the apple and ginger gel. First pour 200 grams of apple juice into a saucepan together with 80 grams of ginger syrup, 20 grams of apple vinegar and 3.5 grams of agar powder. Mix this well and then bring it to a boil for 1 minute. After that pour it into a bowl and let it set in your fridge. Then transfer it into a blender and blend it into a smooth gel. Now transfer it into a piping bottle and then let it set in your fridge for at least 1 hour. Then for the chocolate tuya. Mix 60 grams of egg white with 40 grams of sunflower oil, 10 grams of butter, 50 grams of sugar, 25 grams of flour and 25 grams of cocoa powder. Blend this till smooth. Once smooth, spread it on a tuya mold and level it with a palette knife. Now bake it at 160 degrees Celsius for 12 minutes till crispy. Then remove it when still hot to prevent the tuyas from breaking. Now for the pistachio crumble. Transfer 100 grams of pistachio nuts into a blender and blend it into a fine powder. Then also add 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of sugar, 70 grams of flour, 40 grams of white chocolate and 2 grams of flaky salt. Mix this until it's an even dough. Then spread it on a tray that's lined with a silicon sheet and bake it at 150 degrees Celsius for around 25 minutes. Mix it every 5 minutes to create a delicious crumble. Now we can start to finish the dessert. First add a thin layer of the crumble on a plate. Then gently place two crumbles on top and let them defrost for at least 30 minutes. After that take a tuya and pipe small dots on top. Decorate the dots with small verbena leaves. For this you can also use edible flowers. Now pipe four bigger dots of the gel between the crumble and add some more verbena leaves. Then place the Bailey's ice cream on the other side and gently put the tuya on top of the crumbles. Now serve it with the ice cold for Ben broth. Okay guys, that's it for today. The dessert looks amazing. It's really an improvement of the old dish. The old dessert I already improved like four or five times, but this one, I think it's a massive improvement because the last time I did an improvement was, well, it was a long time ago. Let's say six, seven years. So this is really, really next level. I especially love the taste. Because back in the old days, I was focusing on taste, but also a lot on looks and on, yeah, not so much on texture. And this is really well balanced in texture, in flavor, and the looks are still spot on. Especially with the new molds that are now available um, compared to the old days. This is next level. You can always check out the video, how I made it a couple years ago. You can also see me Little me, so that's uh, fun. Well, not little me, but still younger me. And let's just dig in because it looks so good. Especially the canal with the caramelized white chocolate inside and then the base gamo. Such a nice contrast, the brush on top. Yeah. That's so good. And the broth. It's delicious. That's so flavorful in combination with the Baileys. It really balances out the fattiness with the freshness and that Baileys ice cream, that's to die for. Um, like I said, it's such an improvement in texture because the old dessert might was a bit heavy on gelatin, but this one, it's more binded with fattiness instead of with gelatin. So there is a little bit more fat in the recipe and because of that it gets more stable and then you'll need to use less gelatin which it's dangerous because you need to serve it now. If you leave it like this for 30 minutes it's going to be melting um, but texture wise it's so much better. It's really such an improvement. So yeah I'm, I'm super happy with it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. Please let me know in the comments on what you want to see next. Like and share and please subscribe if you want to get more awesome recipes and if you want to support my channel. And as always, bon appetit!